What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Monthly Mayhem Project. We're back here after week... I think we're done with week two at the end of this now? Three? I don't know. It's flying though. The project's gonna be over in no time. So I've got to get some of these details finished up. I took care of sourcing the last of my electronics. That was something that I was still falling behind on. I needed to get done. That's done for now. So I can just sit back, wait for that to show up and get everything installed and test it as soon as that gets here. But at this point, we're just uh, we're just gonna go with it. It's part of the deal with these projects, you know, or this series is that it's supposed to cram everything in and just, you gotta get it done. You have a month. So that's what you have and you do whatever you can during that time. I know Matt is crazy busy with a work project right now. So I he had even told me at this point that he may not get his video up in time or his blog update. Um, and I know that he won't probably have had much time to get his truck much done on it since the last update anyway. Um, but I'm sure he'll get that update done as soon as he, he gets a moment. We both have real jobs. Mine just happens to be NRC, so maybe I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit more flexible there. The truck is made progress. So I've started my aluminum panels. As you can see here, I've got the aluminum roof skin on. I've got a temporary or a initial cut of my side panel. You know, the side panel, it doesn't flow like I really want, but I think it's gonna be good enough. And that's gonna be what a lot of this stuff is gonna have to be like, it's just good enough. Um, I also 3D printed the front hood and that is going to be on there. This one as well, It's it was super quick. I bet I took 35 minutes to draw up the hood. This is, you know, it's taken a number of the design hints off of what Jordan Pellegrino's full size hood is. It's just got all these crazy contours and uh, it's all flat though, because the, the full size one is made out of flat, you know, sheet metal. So just breaks and things and scoops everywhere. And I just did something similar. Now, the one thing I did is I didn't, you know, shell it out on the bottom. So this is a, a big, heavy hood right now and that's not going to stay i'm going to finalize the model and shell it out make the mounting points so that i can get it mounted on there quickly easily without having to you know worry about this thing being you know three or four ounces i got the tires finished i got the foams in there the tires are glued as best as i can i hate gluing tires i hate gluing tires it is my least favorite thing to do I don't know why everything isn't a beadlock. You know, of course I know, but still, I hate gluing tires. That's the worst thing in RC. I'm super happy with the you know overall styling and direction of this project so far. Matt's build is looking really good. I'm I really do like that Proline Power Wagon body on there. Like it was just a good call on his part. It fit well. It's got an aggressive look. The whole thing. You know he's got that metal bumper on that plastic front skid and then that's right in front of his body you know that thing's just gonna smash into the body though so I you know I think I've got some decent performance planning on mine where you know his is gonna look really good but hopefully you know maybe some of these other things is where I can start to catch up Matt was talking about you know how a lot of his stuff is modular comes off this actually this car underneath I really haven't changed this Proline Fusion base it's it's basically like it is. The only thing I did is I took off the body mounts and then I made the tabs that the cage bolts to uh, on the bulkheads. But it bolts to the rear bulkhead with the three factory body mount screws and in the front bulkhead with the two factory body mount screws. So this whole thing can just come off and then it's the short course fusion underneath with big ass tires. So um, this truck underneath it's pretty much bone stock. It's a really fun looking base. I'm excited to drive this because it should be fun. I'm going with a slower motor than Matt did. I'm an, I'm only going with like an 1850 kV motor. And you know, with only like 13.9 or 14 to one reduction, <clears throat> I'm trying to not make this thing too fast. Part of our initial qualification was trying to go the slowest from two distances. So I'm gonna have that slower motor than Matt. I'll gear down as low as this thing can actually facilitate and then you know, so I should have an advantage there. I'm going for that low KV motor for a number of reasons. I want that slow speed control in, you know, the rocky terrain and things like that. And I think that that lower KV motor is going to be better at that. So I'm really trying to find that mix of where I can make this thing work. Part of the decision that I made early was to not pull out that center differential and go with a standard style transmission. Whether or not that was the best decision, I. I think that it was with the amount of time that I've had to work on it already. I just don't know that I would have had the time to make 
all of the modifications needed to try and make a standard transmission work. We'll see in the end if that was the wrong decision or not. There's still a lot of work to be done. I have not welded in the panel nuts yet. I've got to weld in panel nuts and then I've got to come up with all of the scale points that I need to try and get up to a level playing field with Matt because I think that he's got me beat pretty considerably in that area and I think he's going to have a lighter truck you know so there's he definitely at this point he has a better game plan than I have but I have a tube cage so who's the real winner so my plan is currently that I hope I can get the panel nuts welded the body panels finalized and attached by the end of this weekend then I hope that I can get the electronics installed early next week and basically that will leave me in a place where I just need to do the final details and things like that so that I can just get it wrapped up. Now, there is also a little bit of a caveat there in that we built in a buffer zone between when the last video is and Proline by the Fire. And we didn't say anything about what could or couldn't happen during that time. So we got a little extra time, but I may take some of that time to kind of finish the you know appearance try and get the panels looking good and you know maybe spend a little bit of extra time there just a few things like that um but the whole i have to have time to do that in the first place so who knows because uh things are starting to get crazy at this point so and by the end of this i do want this thing to look good but i haven't decided on a paint scheme i don't think i'm going to go as far as trying to match the wrap on uh, Pellegrino's car, but I need to come up with a color for the panels and the cage and everything. So I have to, you know, Proline by the Fire has got a retro theme to it this year. It'd be cool to do some sort of retro paint job, but, or, you know, more likely than a real detailed paint job for me would be some sort of wrap that I could get done in time. So if you have any suggestions on that part, I'll take those as well. There was definitely some good suggestions in the last video as far as things to add for scale points, some simple things and things like that. You know, part of it is, is that, you know, looking over scale points, there's a maximum number of non-functional items, which I think I'm easily going to cap out on that. And I really need to look at where Matt is going to cap out and where he's not as well, because, you know, I don't need to keep adding a bunch of scale firewood and sleeping bags in the back if I only need eight points and I can check those things off pretty quickly without having to do a bunch of that hokey stuff. So beyond that, that's when I need to look at functional things. Matt did add a metal front bumper, which is extra points. I'm going to leave this plastic one, you know, um, I'm not going to call the front of this hood a metal bumper. So I, I don't think that that is a fair representation. I need to start looking at some of those things going back and forth and actually trying to play the rules of this competition a little bit more to see if, uh, you know, if, how, and where everything's kind of coming into place. I do think that I've got a metal rear bumper at least, but my shock hoops don't mount to the cage so I don't get metal shock hoop points and there's all kinds of stuff like that. The best suggestion from the last video was, you know, rear steer and there's, I don't have time for that at all in any way. But if I would have kind of thought about that from the start, which I should have, it should have been an obvious thing, that would have been an absolutely just, that would have been a great suggestion and something that I really should have, you know, looked at trying to execute at the beginning. It would have taken a lot of work to, you know, mount bell cranks and, you know, change arms, get all of that steering dialed in but it would have been worth it. I just wish I would have thought of it earlier or not thought of it. I wish it would have been suggested to me or I would have thought about it beforehand. Um, but either way, that was a great suggestion. I think my stance is looking pretty good. You know, I think my ride height looks decent. I don't have any electronics or battery or anything else in there, but I also have no preload in the shocks. So I've got some room to play around with that and really adjust it to where I need to. But the look of those high racks on this chassis, if for nothing else, if modified high racks on a Proline short course Fusion, looks like a winner to me. I need to work on getting an interior fit into here. I do have one major, you know, design quirk at this point, we'll call it. And that is that it is extremely difficult to get a battery into this car. Um, you know, unless I put it through the windshield, you know, it's easier, but I'm gonna have a driver interior in there and. So I need to like split the interior so I can pull it out of the way and get the battery in or something. It's that's 
that's more difficult than I am really super happy with. But, um, you know, it's the nature of not doing all of my planning at the beginning or whatever you want to call it. We'll get there though, it's gonna work out. So again, if you guys are familiar with Sorka's scale rules, I'm still open for suggestions because I'm gonna need those functional points as well. I think the non-functional points are going to be easy. Um, I'm thinking there's gonna be a number of those those functional points though that I'm gonna have to look for and find out. You know, I see some 3D printed sand ladders in my future. The good news is, is that I've got plenty of orange filament. After this challenge is completed, I think that this is still gonna be one of those cars that I find myself wanting to drive. You know, and that was the nice thing about doing this monthly mayhem challenge where we didn't have to try and do one of these challenges that was so much more rigid into a metric that was easily measured from a distance. And since we're actually going to be in the same place at the same time, really opened us up to uh, doing something more like this. And that's great. And unless you guys want to keep flying Matt out to events like this, uh, this one may be a little bit more rare than the other style. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate all your guys' support. These projects are a lot of fun and they're just meant to be for us to, you know, be able to do something that's not directly always exactly what we do on this channel. So a little fun for us, hopefully some fun for you guys to watch as well. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the Scale News update and Wednesday for the next Monthly Mayhem video. And with that, thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. As always, appreciate all the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy them. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see them as they get posted. Appreciate all that stuff. It really helps a bunch for the channel, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.